This happens to be an MS-261. And it's got a chain on it that we refer to as a .325. And that's just the, the pitch of the chain. Don't worry about you know trying to re remember that. That's just the pitch of it. There's several different types of file kits out there. A real experienced professional will just have a handle with a file. But it, he worked his way to that, or she worked their way to that level by starting out with something like this. This is a great little kit. It's called a file kit. It's got a flat file in it. It's got a tool that we use to clean the groove of the bar. And we take the chain off. And then we have our actual file handle with guide. Okay. So I already mentioned when you have to apply pressure, you need to stop and sharpen the chain. And all we want to do is just give it a couple strokes. Okay. Now, you will read in some manuals where they'll tell you to, okay, get out a caliper and measure and find the shortest cutter and you want to sharpen to that. We're not going to, that's not real work, right? You're just going to hit a couple strokes and just keep working around. Hopefully you realize, looking at this chain, this is a right-hand cutter and that's a left-hand cutter. So when I get ready to... From this side, I'm going to sharpen the left-hand cutters. I either turn the saw around or I get on the other side. This is a little tool called a stump vise. You're in the field, you're working. We had it, we made an accident. I mean, I, I cut through and I hit the dirt. This chain spins about 55 miles an hour. And if you, your log is laying on the ground and you cut all the way through and touch the dirt, you dull the chain that quick, okay? You can't stop it miles an hour you've already hit over half the cutters in just a fraction of a second okay so this is my guide I match it up it's for a 0.325 chain the marks that are cut in the top are angles to help me keep the proper angle on the chain okay now before I get too far here Especially with all these cameras out there. You should always work with gloves anytime you're dealing with salt chain. Or you might bleed. Or you might bleed. Okay. So this is already set up with the file. I've got the right size file in it. And what the guide will do is keep me from cutting too deep into the cutter. If I cut too deep, I start cutting into the actual tie strap or the frame of the chain and I can put what is known as a hook in the cutter and then it gets way too aggressive for me, okay? So I joke around and say sharpening a chain is kind of like perfecting your golf swing. We work on that our whole life to get that perfect swing. Well, the strokes on these cutters, it's going to take a while to get a hang of So I always try to sharpen in the same location. So I'm gonna put the brake on so that my chain is, is held steady. I'm gonna set my file guide on it. And if you guys see that line going across, when that passes over the guide bar, it should be parallel with the bar. And that's how I know I'm keeping the proper angle. So I'm just going to... Three or four cutters and you will feel it start to, as when it's dull, you'll feel resistance. As you start to develop the edge, it gets slick. So you'll know after three or four strokes, that's enough. Now, if I hit a rock with this, or I hit a piece of metal in my wood, I'm probably not gonna be able to sharpen it with a file. Because once the cutter gets damaged, let's say for instance, I struck something, and I, I knocked off what is known as the working corner. I may have to bring the cutter back past that in order to get back to some fresh metal, okay? So it's all based on the condition, how it looks. All right, so with this file guide, we're sharpening the actual cutter. In front of the cutter, we have a piece which is known as a depth gauge. That determines how thick of a chip the cutter takes out. Now, if I lay a straight edge on the cutter, you should be able to tell that it's higher in the front than it is in the back. It actually slopes. 
So as I'm taking metal away, in reality, I'm lowering the cutter. I have to maintain the distance between this leading, <clears throat> this leading edge of the depth gauge and the tip of the working corner for it to proper chip clearance. So to do that, I have to have a tool known as a depth gauge tool. So all of this comes in the kit. I set this on top of the cutter. Let me get it right where you can see it. And if the depth gauge needed to be maintained, any of that that sticks above, I would use my flat file and take it off. So about every third sharpening, I mean, you should check it every time, but about every third sharpening, you're probably gonna to have to take the depth gauges down as well. Okay? So, I set the file as, set the guide in. I make sure it feels good. I go across, and I just stay in parallel with it. Okay? Go all the way around. Anybody wanna try a stroke? Yes. Take me a second to get this set up. Let me, let me do one to make sure I got it set properly. You can't mess that up. So this is another tool, another accessory. So if you want to if anybody else wants to give it a try, and then I'll I can do it with my eyes closed. Not only will it sharpen the cutter, but it takes the depth gauge down at the same time. Okay? So, again, it's one of these things I gotta... So, I set it in place. I've got the same little lines here to help me. And while I'm going across the cutter, I'm also taking down the depth gauge as well it's got a separate file and it's cutting down my depth gauge as well mm -hmm. cool. two in one two in one that is a cool device and then of course if I'm going to sharpen the other side I just flip it around so if anybody wants to give that a try and there's what you have to pay attention to is to you need to know what chain is on your product you may need a little help to make sure you get the right code. This one says 3 8 P. So that's the chain that's on this little MS-170 down here. So I can't just use that on any product. And again, I, this mark is called a wear indicator. This is a warning or an indicator telling you cannot take the depth gauge down any lower than that. And on my cutter, I can't sharpen, I should not use it when I get back Holy that far. So you can sharpen it all the all way All the way back. back. If you maintain your angles properly, then sure, you got lots of usage out of this chain, okay? And it's stamped on all the chains, okay? Now, to answer your question, how bad is your chain damaged? Remember I mentioned that the working corner here, this is the piece that actually severs the chip. And if I look at this chain upside down, it's like a wood planer. Okay, so the distance between the tip of the working corner and the tip of the depth gauge is how thick of a chip it'll take out. And this is a great illustration of me showing you putting a straight edge on it is taller in the front than it is in the back. So as I take metal away, sharpening the cutter, eventually I've got to maintain my depth gauge. And that's what we were doing with that tool. So you hit the dirt or you hit a rock or a nail, I'm gonna look at how much of my working corner is damaged. And maybe it's damaged clear back to here. I mean, that means I've got to bring it back past that to establish a new working corner. And that's where an electric grinder is going to be your best bet. Trying to do that with a file, it's going to be tough. So here's what you do. A chain like that, I would do my best to get it sharpened. And I would save that for those dirty applications. When you know you're going to do it again, you throw that chain on. Okay? Yep. All right? What this particular is called a rapid super, and that's what we consider a full chisel or what would be considered a flat top, the most aggressive chain made.
Now that's generally designed to be sold and used by someone with you know, a trained professional that has extraordinary cutting needs. The rest of the cutter shapes are what are known as micro or rapid micro. And that just means that it's more of a rounded. So now let me put it in layman's terms, what I just said, okay? This chain is very fast cutting, but my working corner is very, there's very little material there. So easy to dull that chisel point. This requires a lot of maintenance. Um, it's someone that really is good with a file to keep it working properly. This, I have at least three times more of a cutting surface area. This is the chain I would recommend for all of us. I mean, everybody out here, a rapid micro. It's semi-chisel, and then I need to know what saw it's going on to match it properly. So it's not per tree, per se. It's more well, of a per speed and, and roughness of the cut. There is what is known as hardwood. I mean, people call it full chisel. I say, oh, that's hardwood chain. And you know, a sharp chain is gonna cut frozen wood, it's going to cut dry wood. So yes, you can get real specific then, but for general all-around cutting, the semi-chisel is our best bet. 